Hello and thanks for watching this Acumatica video brought to you by Cloud9 ERP Solutions. So in this video we're going to talk about tracking lot and serial numbers in Acumatica. Your ability to receive and sell items and track them by specific lots or serial numbers. So what you can see here is a list of lot and serial classes. Lot and serial classes can be created to define exactly how you want to track lot and serial numbers. So if we click on our inventory menu, this is where you find it. It's under inventory preferences, lot serial classes. And if we open one up, you can see there's a number of options here. So to get started, let's hit the plus buttons just so we can walk through these options. And then we're going to go through transactions, see how they actually work. So you pick your class ID and a description. We have tracking methods that allow us to track either lot or serial numbers. That's your option here. If I choose lots, then I have the ability to track an expiration date. The option required for dropship indicates whether or not we want to bypass the tracking if we're drop shipping an item. If you send a request into a vendor to drop ship directly to the customer, you may want to override this because you won't necessarily have that tracking information. Acumatica could detect that and allow you through without having to track it. So over under assignment method, this is when we assign our lots or serial numbers. So in Acumatica, you have the flexibility to associate your serial numbers when you receive them into your warehouse, or you can simply not care when they go into your warehouse, but instead assign those serial numbers on the way out when you issue them, when you ship them. So those are the two options. And I've seen customers use it differently for different reasons. You know, if it's a high expensive item, you may want to track the serial number when received. So you could associate that different item in your warehouse. But if you're just looking to associate a number or a lot on the way out, just so that you could track when it went out to the customer, then you'll use when used. Under the issue method, this gives us the ability to automatically assign a lot or serial number on the way out or make it user enterable. So again, if it's a TV and it's got a serial number on it, I'm probably going to assign that serial number when I receive it. And when I issue it, I'm probably going to pick that serial number user enterable. So when we're scanning the item, the system will require that you scan a serial number as well. But the other options allow you to simply move the oldest stock out, first in, first out, or last in, first out. Or you could just use a sequential. Or if we lot track with expiration dates, meaning we're tracking the expiration dates when we assign a lot number, we can do it in the expiration date order. And then lastly, if we want to generate serial numbers, so on the way in, if we auto generate our next number, we could define exactly how we want that serial number to look. So for example, you could put in SR or lot dash, and then you can add additional variables here with the day, the month, and then an auto incremental value. So this gives you a lot of flexibility to configure automatically making serial numbers the way you want them to be. And again, this is more applicable when you're using the items for assignment method than when you're assigning the serial numbers on receipt. Because if you're receiving those items and you want to assign the serial number, probably they have them on the box. And that's when you do it. So if we take a look at our serial number lot tracks that we have in the system, we'll start off with the very first one. This is lot number when received, issue method, expiration. So we associated the lot number when we received the item. We're tracking the expiration date. We issue this out based on the expiration date. So that's the order. We're going to take the later dated expired ones so that we can get them out the door before they expire on us as quick as possible. So that's this issue method. We're automatically generating the lot numbers when we receive. So instead of making it enterable, we're going to automatically generate the next number. So it's going to start with L-R-E-X and then that number. 
Now, before we get to the next lot zero class, let's take an item with this lot class and receive it and then sell it. So before we do that though, let's take a look at a stock item profile. What I did is I went through the system and I created items using the same lot zero class code so that we can easily identify it through this demonstration. So for example, this LREX is associated, you can see all the different settings for the stock item profile. It's associated to a lot zero class of LREX. So it'll make it easier when we're receiving this item and then selling it. So let's create a new one. We'll pick a vendor. We don't want to create the bill now. And we'll receive LREX quantity five. Now you notice I moved these columns over. So this is the lot serial number. This is the expiration date. If I try to release this, I'll get an error message because we're requiring expiration dates. So I'll pick an expiration date of maybe the 23rd and then I'll release. Now because this is automatically generating the lot number, you'll notice it automatically associated 0, 0, 0, 002. If I click on allocations here, you can see that we ordered five of them and they all got associated with this lot with an expiration date of 623. Now if I were to buy this again, I'll pick an expiration date of further out. So we'll go to the second this time and we'll receive another quantity five and we'll release. Now here you could associate and look up the other lots. So if I wanted to, I could pick another lot, but what that would do is that would change our expiration date to back to the 23rd because it already has an expiration date. You can't have two different expiration dates in the same lot. But instead I'm going to leave it alone and I'm going to release it. And you can see Acumatica assigned a brand new lot with this expiration date. And the reason I created two is because I wanted to show how when we sell this, it's automatically assigned by the expiration date. So when we sell a couple of these, it should pick the 623 date because that stands to expire much sooner. So let's create a new invoice, open up an invoice. This is an SO invoice, so we can ship this right out, not have to go through the sales order process. We'll pick a customer, select our item code. We'll ship quantity five and we'll release. Now you'll notice Acumatica picked this lot two. And the reason for that is because based on the expiration date, we needed to get that one out sooner than later. We had picked the one that was July 2nd, then the 623 could expire on us. So that's what it did here. If I create another one, we have a quantity five of another one. And I add it again probably could have used the copy and paste, would have made it a little faster. You'll see Acumatical now pick the third lot because again, that expires later. We scroll to the right, you can see the expiration date from that lot. And that's how that one works. Now if we go back and we go to our second lot class, what this is doing is it's tracking lot numbers. We don't care about the expiration date. The assignment is when received and the issue method is FIFO. So this in effect is very similar and doesn't really require a demonstration because the only difference is we don't care about tracking numbers and we're automatically issuing in a FIFO first in first out method. So we'll move to the next one. And again, if you have any questions, of course, you can always reach out to us and we can clarify it further. So let's go to the next one. 
So this is lot when used, meaning we create the lot number when we actually use or issue the item. So this is LU, so let's create a purchase receipt. Again, we're avoiding the step of creating the purchase order, we're just jumping right to it. I don't want to create a bill. And we'll do quantity five here, and we'll release it. I right, put the quantity in the wrong spot, and we'll release it. Okay, so when we click allocations, you can see there's no lot number yet, because again, we don't associate a lot until after we issue it out the door. So if we go over to our invoice, create a new one, And again, do quantity five. And we release it. Acumatic automatically associates a brand new lot serial number on the way out. If we go back to our lot serial class, you can see what it's doing is it's taking LU and it's putting a number after it, automatically creating that, generating that number and sending it out the door. So pretty easy stuff. Assignment method is when used, not when received. Now if we move ahead and we'll go to serialization. Serialization is very similar except that every quantity that you buy and sell have their own number. As opposed to lots, you can have a bundle of quantities against a single lot. So if we take SR Enter and we'll receive some items. I'm going to create a bill here. And we'll buy five of them. And before we release, notice we are assigning the serial numbers when we receive them. And it's user enterable. So that means we're going to have to go to work and create these serial numbers. So if we go back, we try and release. Acumatica is going to warn us and say, well, wait a sec, you don't have any serial numbers in there. Not warn us, but give us an error. We click on allocations here. You can see that we have a grid here that allows us to enter all the serial numbers. Now we could do one of two things. We can go over here and type some serial numbers. Or scan them. If we're using the advanced WMS, then we could do this in a barcode environment. So we could continue to go through here and associate all of these serial numbers. The other thing we could do here is generate our serial numbers. So if we go back to our lot serial class, you'll notice we need the constant S pound because that's the way we defined it here in this track. But the problem is, is that there's no automatic number here. So if we want an auto incremental value, we need to put that line in there and hit the save button. Now if we go back, close this, We'll save this. We'll put it on hold and we'll save this. Take it off hold and then go to allocations. You'll notice now we have the ability to tweak this number. So for example, if we wanted to maybe put 101 there and hit generate, Acumatic will do the work of generating all the serial numbers. This is useful if you have hundreds of items. You don't want to type all of them in. We'll click OK here. We'll release. And now if we go to sell this item, so we'll click a new sales invoice, we'll pick a customer. And we'll just sell three this time. And if we go to release here, we have an error message, right? So we need to be able to assign our serial number. So if we go back to lot zero class, you can see these are user enterable. So what that means is when we're on our invoice, we need to be able to have a line for each row with that serial number. Now, had we done this at the sales order level, and we'll do that right now,
And again, we'll do quantity three. And if we create this into a shipment, here we have an allocations button, just like the purchase receipt. So if we click on it, for each line, we can pick where we're pulling it from. So this was receiving. The serial number, in this case, we can do a lookup, pressing the F3 key. And again, with our advanced WMS, you could simply scan this. Acumatica will have you scan the serial number each time, and that will automatically increment the quantity that you're scanning to the shipment. So now if I do an action confirm shipment, you can see that we've allocated these serial numbers, and they're out the door. Later, I would prepare my invoice. So that's that, and now if we take a look, this is the same thing as before with the lots. We're entering our serial numbers upon receiving, but we're automatically associating the serial numbers on the way out using a FIFO method, but you have other options here. Or again, user enterable. Over here, I'm also creating my serial numbers when I receive using an automatically generated system here. And the issue method is sequential. So whatever the serial numbers are, that's how I assign those numbers on the way out. So Acumatica will just look for the lowest number and automatically associate those serial numbers when you ship confirm. No need to enter the serial number. And then lastly, this is serial numbers when used. So this is, I receive them, I'm not bothered with the serial numbers when I receive them. Nobody's bothering me with that information. But then when I go to sell it, I have to assign those serial numbers. And in this case, we're automatically generating those serial numbers on the fly using an automatic number. We're starting at 2000. The serial number starts with ABC and then it has that number. So ABC 2000 and so on. And that's how that one works. So that's a quick overview about serialization and lot tracking in Acumatica. If you have any questions for us, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much and have a great day.